you know me, I like to start off with a funny story. Um, that's my go-to. Okay, so you all know the amazing singer Alexis Ruiz, right? Yeah. She's awesome, isn't she? So when we were growing up, uh, Alexis wanted to try many different sports. I guess sports was never her thing. She ended up doing music. But she tried playing softball once, right? Um, <laughs> We went to the park with me, my dad, and Alexis, and she was practicing doing like softball, like all that, right? And she had finished, and I was playing with like an R, like an RC airplane, like thing, like a remote control electric airplane. It crashed right in front of her. She, my dad was done pitching to her. Okay, there's no need for Alexis to swing. So what do I do? I'm like, oh, it's perfect. It's fine. I go, and I'm like, mind you, I'm like seven. Okay, so I go. Right, and I grab it, and Alexis has a metal bat, <laughs> and she just goes right when I go up, bah! Oh. <laughs> I hit the floor, I couldn't breathe, and Alexis is like, Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> I didn't see you there. My, that I, I don't know about Alexis, but I feel like she was really mean when she was younger. Like, she did things like, I didn't see you, like, no, like, that was very, like. No one swang. Like, I mean, no, no one swang. No one pitched to you. How, how do you just swing? And she, like, knocked the air out of me. I remember my dad grabbed me. He's like, what were you thinking, Alexis? I was just practicing. I closed my eyes, and I was just thinking about it. <laughs> That's a lame excuse. <laughs> what does that have to do with my message today? Here's why. Because you know what? 2019 was a, was a good year for me, I think. It was kind of a good year. Um, but near the end of it, I thought, like, right when it was good, I'm just going to Grab it, just someone had a gum and swing and knock me out. Has that, did that happen to anybody? Did anyone have a, have a roller coaster of a year a little bit? A little bit. There was highs, there was lows. For me, I felt like 2019 was like getting on a roller coaster. Right when you thought you'd get off, they were just like, uh, we're doing it again. I was like, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> That's how I kind of felt it was. And then going into 2020, I was like, man, it better be great. I'm looking for, you know, you know how every, every year, every church across America is like, the, the next year is a year of vision. <laughs> it's like, dude, wasn't that last year? Um, but I was like, oh, 2020, please, God, let this one be it. Um, but that, that's what I'm really believing for this year. But how many of you know what happened last year? Just because it hits like, yay, at 12 o'clock, it's 2020, doesn't erase everything that happened, Right? It's not just like clean slate. Uh, you live with some of the things that, that have taken place in your life. And you know what? Sometimes those things that have happened in your life can begin to move you and to shake you. They can, they can begin to even just uh, break up the foundation of everything you believe. And, you know, it's hard being in the position that I'm in uh, as, as a pastor's son, man. It's great. It has some great, like, stuff to it. People say hi to you. People give gifts to you, but they're not for you, but for your parents. They, they smile at you like a little bit way too much. They hold your hand way too long. You're like, yeah, yeah, okay. But then it also comes with some bad stuff with it. You know, I, I love my parents and all that, but being their son and being any pastor's kid, it comes with a lot of trials and tribulations, man. You get talked about more than anybody's business. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm, like, I could have my own show. I really could. Like, you could tune in on E! at 7 o'clock every Tuesday, and you'll get, to, you'll get a crack out of it. Trust me. But that stuff, like, gets to you. I'm 20 years old now. My parents have been doing the church, what, 10 years now? Is that bad that I don't even know? 10 years, right? 10? Yeah, come on. Come on, elders and pastors. Help me out here. Come on. <laughs> Let's kick it in gear, man. Save me. But I've been going through it for that long. In 2020, I was like, God, I need a break. Man, I'm done with it. I'm so tired. I've put in my work. I've put in, I work at the church now, God. What more do you want? But you know what? I believe that uh, our See Beyond series is, is such a divine word from heaven for us. Because, you know, when you see beyond means that you have to get from somewhere low to high. That means there has to be conflict. That means there has to be opposition. It has to come. With every new year, there's always new opposition, new opportunities, but, but, but new, new setbacks. And I began to realize, you know what? Imagine if we, if we took what happened last year or we took what happened to, what happened to us as children, that, that moment that rocked you in, in your walk, 
And if we use that to catapult us, to see beyond. Man, see beyond is a scary thing. That's not an easy thing. Like, see beyond, you know, you get those motivational speakers. See beyond. You see that million dollars. All it takes is a dream. Read a book and you're there. Like, no. <laughs> That's not how it works. In order for you to see beyond means you got to get dirty. You got you to gotta, you gotta get to those things that make you feel uncomfortable. But it needs, it needs a, a, a thirst for God, though. Because you know what? You can do things amazing on your own. But who wouldn't want to partner with God? I want to partner with God because my dreams, they're great. But if I can partner with Jesus, my, my dreams are unbelievable. Um, can we put up my first scripture, please? Psalms 42, 1 through 2. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? That's a lot. That, that dude's hungry. Man. I'm, I sometimes I'm like, God, do we have to talk? Do we have to pray for more than five minutes? Because after like seven, I'm like. <clears throat> but in order for you to see beyond means that you have to have a hunger, a thirst for God. Like that's everything you want. And you know, it, at last year near the end of it, I was having a really rough night. It was really bad. I was crying. I hate to cry. I don't like to cry. I don't even let my dad see me. He asked me for water and I was like. <sighs> He's like, you good? I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> you didn't, you just know. It's like, don't ask. Uh, I was, I was bawling. I was like, God, I need you. I need to hear from you. I was, I was ready to throw in the towel. To be honest with you, I was going to tell my parents, I want to quit. I'm done. And you know what? I went to Alexis that night. This is where Alexis becomes a good sister. <laughs> it was around 12 o'clock at night, and I woke her up. She's like, what? And I was like, hey, I need to hear from heaven. I was like, can you get on the piano? I'm like, and just play whatever God tells you. And I remember I cried for an hour while she played. For an hour. And my prayer wasn't, God, why? Why this? Why that? For once in my life, I, I, not for once, but it took that a really dark place for me to have this, th that genuine type of, of, of plea to God that that's all I want is to see you, God. I was like, tell me what you need from me. I'm like, you give and you take away, but my heart chooses to say, blessed be your name. Name it, I'll give it. I was like, I've got nothing else to lose, God. What do you want? And I didn't get some divine word that night. I didn't get my son, Richard. I want this, 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 and I will give you whatever you desire. I didn't get no, like, none of that. I no genie, like, I, I, all I got was the silence. But you know what? There was beauty in that silence to me. I was like, dang, I could pray a genuine prayer like that? I was like, God, I'm thankful for what I've lost. God, I'm thankful for those who have spoken ill against me. God, I'm thankful for, for all, all the things that have set me back. Man, it created a hunger in me. It created a thirst in me. Before, when I had distractions or, or things that were blinding me, oh, I, I could barely give, give God the time of day, but it took that for me to get a hunger, a drive for God. Man, 2019 could have knocked me out. But man, it was, a, it was the greatest bounce back for me. I've never been so on fire for God. Like I, I haven't felt this in years. But it's a new experience I got with God. It's a beautiful experience. But you know what? It, it takes that dark place. You know, I'm so thankful for my family and for Alexis for doing that that night. Because she was just legit playing. She's like, and she, I know she's getting tired because she's like, do you want me to keep going? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, all right. <laughs> And I remember, uh, yeah, I was praying, and I was like, I was still crying, and she's like, all right, uh, do you know the time frame on this? <laughs> I was like, Alexis, I love you, but keep going. And she did it. I think we did it for like an hour and 15 minutes. I did that night, just crying out to God. And I, I didn't get tired. I didn't get, I just felt like it was like the most rawest moment I've had with Jesus in a long time. It was beautiful. So I thank my sister for that. But you need to realize that, in order for you to see beyond means getting into that place that you really don't want to see at all. In order for you to see beyond means you've got to turn to those things that, that challenge you, that, that break you to your core, that make you feel uncomfortable. It was cool. I was talking to Stephen and Becca, and one of Becca's things that she said she wanted to do this year is every, every single day she wants to do something that's uncomfortable for her. And I thought, dang, that's, that's pretty dope. I was like, dang, man, made my goals look whack. <laughs> I, like, I want to do something that makes me feel uncomfortable every single day. Imagine if we all did that. 
Imagine how crazy our faith would be if we could be uncomfortable for just five minutes, for just one person, one conversation. Imagine how many seats we could be filled right now besides you. How many open seats are around you? you? We can be the solution, but it means getting tired. It means getting weak because God never promised us this walk that we would always be, you know, fully satisfied all the time and always like, hey, brother, how you doing, sister? Want to know what I'm, my devotional says today? It's not always like that. It's not. But, but God did promise us that he would fill us, though, even when we feel like we got nothing left. You know, I, I got a funny story to kind of tie this all back. You, you guys know my dad. Dad, you're not here right now, so I can say anything I want, and you're not going to hear about it until a month from now. <laughs> so this is off the record, Elliot, all right? <laughs> I don't, cut the live stream. <laughs> I don't care. Make sure we don't see Pastor Mauricio watching. Uh, so I played football, right? Um, and you know my dad, he's gun ho in everything we do. So we ha- for our last day of training for the summer, we, they called it leave it on the field. God, I hate that. Um, my my uh, head coach was a former Marine, but also too, like it was the, it was the end of hell, hell Week. So he was like, let's combine both exercises and just jam it out. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, all right. I get there that day, <coughs> and my dad... My dad's like, oh, I meet you at your practice. So I was like, okay, I'm at the practice. And guess what my dad does? Only my dad, okay? <laughs> my dad brings himself two chairs, snacks, and brings a friend of his. <laughs> no, no, no. This isn't just any friend. He brings a guest worship leader that he invited here for that week to come watch me. Who does that? No parents are watching. He gets on the sign like, yeah, papa. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I've never felt so retarded in my life. <laughs> yeah, Papa, you got it. We haven't even started yet, Dad. <laughs> and I see his friend, yeah, Isaac. Like, you know, barely knows me, but still going <clears> to, <throat> what are you going to do, sing me into it? Um, no, but we get there, right? But I don't know. My dad's smart, okay? So they sent a consent form for that day because kids are known to pass out. Um, and because they don't give you water through the whole exercise. They spray you with it, but they, you don't get it. <laughs> and you know my dad, hell yeah. <laughs> there you go. Send them in. <laughs> so I do the workout, right? I'm like, we're, we're running. We're doing all that. After like 15 minutes, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm, I'm thirsty. Like, and, I'm, and I'm shaking, low key. But I'm trying to, my dad's there. I'm not going to try to look weak. <laughs> like, come on, like running really hard, <laughs> and I'm going for it, and then we, we get through these exercises, um, and then we're, we were doing, like, all this stuff, and all I remember is that they were, they were spraying water all over us, and this is where they started playing the mind game. During, like, the 15 minutes, they bring out, like, a water buffalo. Any of you guys know what that is? So it's, like, this machine that has ice-cold water in it, and then they just left it in the middle of the field, but no one could go and drink it but they just left it there. And only the coaches would be by it, like drinking water and stuff. And they were taunting us. And I was, I've never, I've never desired water more in my life than that moment. I wasn't thinking about no Sprite. I wasn't thinking about no crush. I wasn't even thinking about burgers, fries. All I wanted was some water. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get me this water. I don't care. Kids were passing out left and right behind. Like I remember we were pushing a sled and this, this, I was like, hey man, you good? And he stopped responding because he was already laid down. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> kids were falling like flies. And I was like, God dang. Uh, you know, I was thinking the strong ones would make it. And then we get to the, the tractor tire flips. Chris, can you come over here? So it's, it's, way, it's way bigger than this. Okay, but this is what we could get for free, all right? So don't judge. Uh, <laughs> so I, I get to the tractor tire flips and... Chris, this isn't about you. This is a totally different person, so don't worry about it. it. I get the weakest dude on our team. <laughs> Partner up with the, You know you got the weakest dude when, ha, when all your team's laughing at you. <laughs> like, you know, kids are, like, thirsty, but they're, like, they got enough to go spit, <laughs> like, to laugh at me. And I was, I was so pissed off. And then I got my dad still, yeah, papa, lead him. <laughs> and I was so pissed. And I was like, oh, my God, I got the weakest kid, and we got to go uh, 50 yards with this, and he's going to pass out. Like, there's no way. 
Um, and I remember I went to him and I was like, right before we got, I grabbed him like really hard, actually by the hair, but I'm not going to do that to you. Um, I was like, dude, you pass out on me, I'm killing you after practice. You will lift this tire. I don't care how tired you get. So what do we do? Can you do it? Because I can't right now. Yeah, I got you. Um, <laughs> so we do it. One more good one, Chris. There we go. Yeah. Now, now, now bring it back, baby. Bring it back. Woo! Yeah, Papa. <laughs> so imagine that, though. So imagine that. And the kid, though, is ready to pass out while we're going. <laughs> and I was like, no, dude. Like, I told him, you're pushing it. And I grabbed him. I got one hand on him. And we're flipping it. And kids are laughing at us. <laughs> you know what? Laugh all you want. We got second. All right? We got second. Okay, don't clap yet, all right? Uh, <laughs> I pushed him once we were done. I was like, Ugh! I left him. I didn't want to be partnered with him again. But what's, what's that story got to do with it? You know what? When you're so thirsty and when you're hungry for God, you'll do anything. It's a deep desperation. The things that used to distract you, the, the things that used to hold you back, the excuses you used to give yourself no longer have, have any weight in your life. All in that moment, I wasn't thinking about quitting. I was thinking about water. Shoot, the quitters, what'd they get? Mimi's time, but they didn't get no water. Someone had to spray water on them. <laughs> like, I was, I was going to get my water. I want to physically grab the, the, the cup, and I want to make sure that I get filled. But I took it personal. I got to a place of desperation. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I didn't even care about my dad. At the, at the end of it, I zoned him out. But I, I had a goal. I was going to get filled. And in order for you to see beyond, to see beyond the pain, you've got to have a goal. You've got to have a goal. And my goal was God. And sometimes we don't have goals yet. We don't know. I don't know what I want to do yet. That's fine. I know that when you seek God, he'll bring you what you need. And that's why in that moment, I was like, I'm seeking this. This is all I care about. And by the end of it, I was shaking. I was, I was terrible. But I got my water. And you know what? When you begin to seek God and you give him this full-out desperation for him, you're willing to bring others with you that you would never have done when you were all about you. That's why I was thankful I got the weakest person on the team because I was able to teach him that he could do something that no one else thought he could do. Everyone discounted him. Even I did. But I was desperate, and I was willing to bring anybody with me so that I could get that water. Yeah, I was a little bit selfish that I wanted the water, but you know what? I became selfless because I made sure he got it with me. God will begin to change your heart once you go through the dirt, once you go through the crap, and as long as you're pursuing him, at the end of the day, there's going to be other people behind you. Amen. I'm preaching today. Amen. I know that was good, don't you? I know that was good. I'm confident, come on. I said it in the mirror, and it sounded good, so. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. You know, but it, it, it takes, it takes a, a, a hunger like never before. Can we put up my, my scripture in Matthew, Matthew 5, 6? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, righteousness for they will be filled. That was, my, that was the scripture I stood on all in high school as I was pursuing God. And I was doing my club and I was in football. You know, it was amazing as I was in it. I got all of my team members to give their life to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was cool. But I, I was hungry, man. They just knew, like, your boy got it. Like, <laughs> I needed to always get to my end goal. You know what? And, and now that I look back on my life, I'm like, I got to do it again. That was cool then, but I got to do stuff now. I got to bring more people with me. I'm at a new level of leadership. I'm at, you're at a new level maybe in your job. Maybe, maybe at a new place in your life. Maybe worse. Maybe better. But God can still use you wherever you're at. And you need to know that if you hunger for God, if you just tell God, God, I will abandon my dreams, I will abandon my hopes for you, it's, that's a selfless prayer. That's a sucky prayer. It really is. Because you're willing to throw away everything that you believe, everything that you, you feel for yourself in order to get a God dream. That's a scary thing to, to pray for. It really is. It's not fun. My parents prayed that prayer years ago, and look where we ended up. We made our own church. I remember the day my parents told me, oh, my God. My, parents, my sister thought they were pregnant. I was like, <laughs> so you guys are pregnant? They're like, no, worse. <laughs> we're making a church. <laughs> God dreams are scary, but imagine if they disobeyed. Imagine. 
Imagine if they wanted their dream. Hmm? None of us would be here. That's how much weight you have on your life. That's, that's how many people are relying on you. A whole room of, of people could be changed. Doesn't mean you need to make a church. Doesn't mean you need to go make your own Bible study. Just, just you being a daughter and a son of God has enough weight of so many people behind you. Don't abandon the call. See beyond. See beyond the crap that's going on around you. See beyond what people may say about you. No matter how close, no matter how far they are from you, see God. Because God will defend you at the end of the day. God will give you the strength at the end of the day to bring other people with you that you never would have thought you could have brought. Yes, you may take this walk alone. Yes, you may feel like you've been abandoned. Yes, you may feel like you're hurt. But I'm, I promise you, he left us a helper. And that's the Holy Spirit. And he will, he will give you all the, the desires of your heart as long as you pursue him and as long as you seek him. That is a promise and a guarantee to you. And I'm so happy that my parents are taking, you know, a sabbatical, a break. The only time I ever seen my dad take a break is when he had cancer. That was the longest he had been away from church. And man, he wanted to come back. He'd fight with doctors. He wouldn't even allow people to go and pray for him if he was going to pass away because he didn't want to hear about death and stuff. Like, that's, that's commitment to the game. So I'm happy for him. But this is where us as a church, we arise. And just because Pastor Mauricio and Pastor Virginia aren't here, it doesn't give us the opportunity to say, oh, I don't need to show up. We are the church. Yes. They happen to be the ones that, that may be the face, but we are the church. We are the body. We are the heart and the soul. We are the mouth and the feet. How beautiful are the feet of those who spread the good news. Are you willing to get your feet dirty? While they're not here. Are you willing to, I want to bring, I want, to, I want them to come back and this church is even more packed than ever. I want to surprise them, we didn't really need you. <laughs> we want you. We want you. Cut that out, Elliot, all right. That, it was supposed to hit better. <laughs> no, but really, I want my dad to know that we don't need him in order for us to survive. But because of what they have imparted to us, we get to flourish. We don't always need daddy to hold our hands. We don't always need mommy to give us the baba. We're going from milk to meat. And you know what? That's why I think it's so awesome that we're going to get into fasting. <laughs> I see some people God still has to work on. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? Prayer and praying with God is connecting with them. Fasting is disconnecting from the world. It's the greatest sh showmanship of, of your commitment to seeing beyond. And that doesn't mean, man, cut out the carbs, cut out this. You know what you're giving yourself excuses for and what you're not willing to do. Because some of y'all, I love y'all, but y'all discount me and you think I can't hear you, but you guys just end up, I'm just fasting coffee, oh my God. That is the thing that holds me back. And maybe it is, okay? Maybe it is. Fast it. But some of you, that's all you do. And then you come out of the fast, you're like, oh, I didn't really see much this time around, but next year, just cut the coffee again. No, stop giving yourself excuses for why you will not see God, for why you, enough. Really, if this is the 2020, the year of seeing beyond, then that means go beyond yourself. Do what you feel you cannot do. Be uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable. I love that fasting cuts out the excuses, but prayer reminds you of the vision. So when you get weak, God, God reminds you that you can be strong. Prayer and the connection with God. This is where you get, begin to work on you and your relationship with Jesus more than ever in your life. If you're like, ah, I'm not there yet. Okay, then get, get here. We're here to help you. It's not a competition. This race that we have with God, this race to the prize, we're all winners. So why the comparison? Let's help each other out. Should help me out. I'm nowhere high. I, I need leadership. I need guidance. Guide me. I'm only 20. Please, someone here, lead me. Correct me. I want it. I want it. Tell me. Give me the tough conversation. But I'm going to do as equal for you as you will for me. Because I want to see us grow. I want to see us reach souls. 
And you know what? Fasting and praying is a great opportunity for us to do that. It's an abandonment of ourselves. And it makes you look good after 21 days, you know, after you, <laughs> you cut out the little food here and there. You can be like, for those who are single looking for a man or for a woman, fasting is a great opportunity. <coughs> cut that one out too, Elliot, all right? <laughs> My dad's going to come back. Why did children's grow? Uh, <laughs> cut out the message. Um, remember what we believed in 2019. Remember those, those little phrase, I can, I will, the end. I can fast. I will pray, the end. No room for excuses. Let's not forget what God imparted to us in 2019. No matter how hard it was, no matter how difficult it, it became, those are, the, those are the phrases that should carry us on into 2020 of why we will continue to pursue God, of why we will continue to, to seek his, his blessings, to seek everything that he has for us. I can, I will, the end. No more excuses. No more excuses. If you're with me and you associate yourself with me, you only go higher. Bottom line, I don't have room for excuses if you're around me because I believe in you. I don't see you for who you are. I see you for who you can become because someone did that for me. And now I got to do that for other people. So don't just see the fasting time as, oh, this is where I sacrifice for me. Think about other people you will reach because of your gloominess because you didn't get coffee or you didn't get meat. <laughs> but just a little bit of things that you begin to take out of your life my God, God does amazing with it. You give God little, he gives you much. My God's a double portion type of God. That's how I told my dad, as he's leaving, man, shoot, I'm getting a double anointing while you're gone. I'm getting, drop your coat or give me your, one of your shoes so I can get a double anointing from it. Man, I, I also, this is a side note, I've, I've gotten so many, I'm not going to say compliments, more like stabs because they're like, hey, man, we saw that you started dressing differently. Your dad did a good job. I was like, hey, man, shoot, no one can give me props for anything. I think I have bad taste in clothes. <laughs> no, but this is the year of change. This is the year where we will see beyond as a church. And I can't wait for when my parents get back and they're blown away by what they see. Not by the seats being filled, not by how many amens we get, but by the lives that we've changed and how we've changed even in our own personal lives. And that's my prayer for all of you in 2020. That's, that was my prayer going in. I said, God, I pray that every single person that touches, touches their feet into this church, that you would bless them in every single thing that they do, that you would reignite dreams within people, that you would reignite the fire and passions within people that think that may have died, that think that may have gone, gone out. No, God is more ever listening. In the silence, God is ever more present. Believe that. Think about it, when, when God stepped in for Abraham and Isaac, it was right before he was about to stab his son. It was quiet. He was like, God, anything? No, oh, no. It's in the midst of the silence. God is ever more present. Can we put on my last scripture, please? Isaiah 58, 6. No, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. This is our opportunity for us to fast for people, maybe in your own families that you want breakthrough for. Maybe you need a miracle in your life. This is where you break those chains. This is where you, where you really say, you know what, God, I'm committing to it. You know what, I, I was like, shoot, I need God and I need to learn how to pray more. So I signed up to be the staff support for that prayer thing that's happening at like 6 a.m. Man, I don't like Jessica De La Rosa. I love her, but man, <laughs> man, she was like, you know, it'd be a great opportunity for you to grow with God. And I was like... <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> I was like, dang it. All right, but I'm going to be a man of my word, so I'm doing it. And then Ariona was like, you're just going to use those days to get off. And I was like, no, I'm not leaving early. I'm staying. I really want to grow with God, so I challenge you all. Show up at 6 a.m. Um, can we put up my, my points for fasting really quick? I'm running out of time. Actually, I'm not. My dad's not here. Who cares? Um, <laughs> why should I fast? Are you in need of healing or a miracle? Do you need the tender touch of God in your life? Is there a dream inside of you that only he can make possible? Are you in need of a fresh encounter? Do you desire a deeper, more intimate, powerful relationship with the Lord? Wanting to be more sensitive to the desires? 
Do you need to, uh, to break away from bondages that have been holding you hostage, addictions, and habits? Is there a friend or loved one that needs salvation? Do you desire to know God's will for your life? Those are all great reasons for you to start fasting and to get plugged in with it. You know, I, I, I encourage you. This is your time to shine. Come with us. Do this with us. Partner with us together.